The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour and the author of the Opening Call Daily Newsletter. It goes out every single day. And we're looking at the markets. In fact, let me just show you something here, for instance. Uh, here is this is the daily. Here's my daily chart of the Dow's when I send out. I discuss where we are on the Chapman Wave methodology. So you're actually learning the methodology as we go along every day. Uh, look how nice it is above the different moving averages. Look at the MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, how strong it is in the daily chart. Look at the stochastic up at 94%, uh, 95%. This is really good. Yes, on balance volume turned down with that final hour sell off on Friday. Uh, we'll be watching this, but in the meantime, this looks very good. L look at the uh, the low, this beautiful doji candle at the low on the 3rd of June. That's where we went, we went long, and uh, we remain long, uh, a position in the 200% uh, 200 long um, ETF. And uh, let's see what else I can show you. Uh, every week I do this. Is that, yep, that's the Dow. I show this in three time frames the daily, the weekly, the monthly. I discuss it in great detail. Where we are, look, the daily is in, in a buy mode, the weekly is in a buy mode, the monthly is in a buy mode. And I'll talk about these three tops that are being three trend line resistances that we're getting into right now. I don't want to call them a top. I don't know if this is going to be a top. Uh, there are, There is enough evidence to say, let me just get out of this and I'll show you something interesting or something that I think is interesting. I'm not sure if you will. But what's really important about this is that look at the move in two legs to the upside. Why? How do I call? Well, let me just show you this as well since this is the beginning of a new week end of the month coming up. My core patterns in the Chapman wave, we start, we try to identify the lowest low bar, merely count each successively higher peak and label them alphabetically on the way up. A is the first peak, one penny above that goes to B, it pulls back, one penny above that starts leg C, becomes a peak C when it turns down after that, and then one penny above that goes to the fourth highest peak, peak D. Fourth highest peak, peak D is where other things can happen. It can go on to E, F, and G, not the point. The point is that your objective in the Chapman wave is to get you to a D in all the different time frames. It could be overlapping waves where the daily has now gone to a D and the weekly is just barely in maybe a leg A, maybe even a leg B. But that baton gets handed over like we did with the dollar from the April of 2018 low, where the baton of the daily hands over to the weekly because the weekly is starting to build pressure, uh, upside pressure. Then the weekly becomes very important because it hands it over to the monthly chart. So this is what we talk about in time frames, in terms of formations, make it simple. There is, let me go back here, straight line move, either up or down. And then there's a, an arch or a cup and there's a combination. So there are really only three patterns, straight line, arch, or cup. And what we're looking at is in this H pattern, when it fails on the left side, is what we're starting to see today in some of the patterns. Uh, you can see that uh, if you take the left side out, it could be very negative, that's why it's red. On the upside, you take out the, uh, the left side high, that's positive. All right, enough with that. Let's get to the nitty gritties. How does it apply in real life? There's your arch formation. It was very negative. It went even lower until we got a buy signal. We actually anticipated the buy signal from the Friday close, this big ugly red candle, that there really should be a turnaround based on a whole bunch of factors that I described in my webinar last Wednesday, uh, Wednesday a week ago. I forgot last Wednesday I was on vacation, and I did the show, but I was still on vacation. And um, now what we've got is this cup formation, and this cup formation is really important. Let me show you in a little bit more detail here in the daily chart. You can see that in the daily chart you've got the, uh, let me just move it over here. You've got very strong technicals with the MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, expanding. I'm just starting to see the histogram, the vertical lines, become a little bit, uh, just turned down a fraction, and the stochastic still very strong at 95%. To me, those are really positive aspects. Now, in terms of the Chapman wave, that means since there was a lower low 
then the start of the previous buy mode, which was on the 11th of March at 25,232, we have to consider that this is a very fresh start with this beautiful doji candle right at the turnaround. Oops, this is slipped away. There it is. With the crossover of the MACD, the, 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 almost what you call a squash in the Chapman Wave methodology between the stochastic and the MACD, saying should go to a very quick A and B. Uh, uh, sorry, I should put it another way. A very strong leg A and then a leg B, and then maybe a C, and then the, the momentum starts to fade and a stochastic starts to pull back a little bit as the MACD fast moving average, the green line, needs to take over the uh, from the talk of the MAC, from the stochastic, it has to lead the market higher to that D. All right. So as it stands, I had a question. Do I think that there's some kind of a top coming in here in the S&P? I'll get to the S&P in a moment. Let's go with the Dow. Dow says there should be a leg C and the leg D in my Chapman Wave automated resistance levels. You've got a resistance all the way at 27,160.90. Um, so into that 27,130 area. Uh, just really getting into the 27,000s, I think, is going to be a really big feat. And if it does that, um, at that point, you might start to see some selling, number one. Number two is the weekly chart is in a leg D. These patterns tend to make an arch formation that could turn into a second arch formation. And this is a, a very powerful breakout. That breakout will occur if the, if the weekly chart at any point doesn't have to be on a weekly basis. It just has to be even on a daily basis. Trades above 27,290. That'll be a fantastic breakout. And that'll mean that the chances of a double, of a triple top here are going to become scarcer and scarcer. Uh, but if there's strong resistance and we cannot start to see closes above 27,000, the whole 26,900 area becomes a sharp resistance, then we're going to say, all right, be careful, at least on a shorter term basis. Let's apply that to the S&P right now. The S&P is trading at 29.50, up 0.36 after a nice move uh, last week, going to a leg B, possible peak B. If there's no new recovery high above 29. Uh, 64.35. That was the high on Friday. Uh, that'll make a peak B, and the MACD is very strong, and the stochastic is at 95 percent. The, the MACD uh, in the weekly chart is positive. It's not great, and the stochastic at 70 percent is really not that good. That monthly chart has gone to only one leg up since the low that was made in December. Uh, I wonder if I can put, yeah, I'll put that there. And that's different to the Dow. Look at the Dow. This is going to be so um, fascinating as it unfolds. The Dow's already in a leg C, and the S&P is only in a leg A in monthly charts. So the MACD in the, in the monthly chart of, of the Dow has to still cross positive. It has stochastic is at 81%, and that's good. All right, let's go on to the QQQ just to do an analysis here since the beginning of the week, almost the end of the month. And the QQQ has gone to a leg C, probably a peak C if there's no new recovery high today. The MACD is good, but nothing like it was at the all-time high of 191.32 on the 28th of April. That plunges down to the 169.27 level uh, for the start of the big rally June the 3rd. I'll be back. We're going to be talking about nitty-gritties uh, in the indices. We're going to go to the commodities as well. We're going to go a little bit more into the dollar and the euro and gold. We'll talk about crude oil and bonds, and then we'll talk stocks. Hey, there's a lot to do. I'll be right back. Files of Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour, 877-927-6648. Love to hear from you. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, I'm going to actually answer the question in the den right now. I was going to go on with some other things. question in the den was, for those of you who use the Chapman Wave methodology <clears throat> and use it a lot and understand it well, the question was, could this not be a leg C? In fact, I still have to call it a gray leg C because it hasn't made an all-time high. Could it, in fact, be a leg G? And it's a very good question, and I'll answer it because it's a purely technical question. And for those of you who do Chapman Wave methodology, that's what I like to do here. To be a leg G, it has to make a new recovery high, a new all-time high. In other words, it has to go above 26,951. Right now, it's not even a gray G leg C because it hasn't made the new high. After F comes the next letter G. There is no H, so G would be the next letter. So the number one is the answer is it cannot be a G until it goes above 26,951. That's number one. Number two, <clears throat> within the context of what we're looking at right now, um, if it's, let's just say it's a C and it goes to a new high this week and it goes even just pennies above, a dollar above 26,951, goes to 52, that will be, um, it depends where we are on the daily. In the daily, we just have to go to 26,908 today. That'll extend a leg B. I don't think that's going to happen. For our subscribers, I said, um, did I even discuss it a moment ago? I discussed it. Yeah, I should have said, uh, this is what I should have said, that for my uh, uh, daily subscribers to my opening call, what I said is, today, if the Dow is plus 50s or more at 1.15 p.m. Eastern time, an up close is likely. But if there is weakness with the minus 30s at any point, then the chances of a weak close increases probably running into Tuesday with leg C later in the week. So I try to describe everything that I can. I do the same thing with the S&P, and we're looking at all these different factors, and that's really important. So now what I'm looking at is, within the context of this market, if by Wednesday, let's say we've gone to 26,908, that'll be a leg C if today is a peak. And then it could just pull back on Thursday, and Friday we could have a nominal new high. And then by the end of the week, going into the uh, holiday weekend, uh, the holiday week, I think, what is the fourth of Thursday or something like that, then what we're looking at is some kind of choppiness as, uh, becoming uh, very important to monitor. 
But at this particular point, the MACD stochastic are really strong. I'm not going to say I'm only expecting slightly higher highs. I'm saying there's a good chance that with the market as it is, kind of a mixed market, there's a, now a lot of pressure. I'm thinking that the upside is going to be limited, especially based on this Chapman Wave automated uh, resistance level of 27,160. The S&P has an automated, uh, coming up, it's automated resistance level way up at 3,027 because it's already broken uh, the other ones. So that is really, I mean, that is uh, 51, 50, 60, 70. It's like 700 down points. Uh, in the QQQ, and I think that's going to have to wait, the QQQ has resistance at 195.69. We're at 188.51. That's a long way to go. So I, that's one of the reasons why I'm still very bullish in the market, but I am expecting some kind of choppiness to uh, unfold very soon. All right, let's get back to our story here. Um, I want you to look at the TLT. So the TLT is trading at 132.28. 132.86 was the high on Thursday, and that was a doji candle with a gap down. And I'm saying that this is a very, keep thinking of this as a high level consolidation within the context of higher highs and higher lows. So there is no signal yet to suggest that the TLT is about to come crashing down. Except if you look deeper, you will see that the stochastic is now at 71%. It's pulling back sharply. And this is just after a recent uh, multi-year high. And the MACD is way lower and failing. So this says to me that there's a chance. Now, let's just do this as, as a counterpoint. You've got one going up, one going down. And what we're looking at here is trough uh, G. G slash C. Yep. G, no, 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 no. Yep. G slash C. Right here. 2996, 2996. Yep, that's what it is. So this is an F. And this is a G slash C uh, in the TBT, which is the inverse of the TLT bonds. This is now short bonds, so it will go higher. And the long bond, no, the long bonds goes higher, the TLT, when the yields are coming down. When yields are going up, it goes up with the TBT as the TLT comes down. So this is now a leg, this is interesting. Look, this is a leg A. We'll see if it can make a B. I'm suspecting that there are just enough, enough fi uh, business reports or financial reports or economic reports that are coming out that are going to suggest to the Fed that we are looking at lower rates, but I suspect they're going to say not just yet. And that says to me there's a chance, and especially if you look at the I by R, I showed this to my subscribers over the weekend, let me see where it is. I don't know if I'll find it quickly. Um, PLV. Ah, IYT. All right, let me, let me just talk about this for a moment because, no, no, I want to go in order. Let's go in order. I said I talk about the IYR. Need to find it. There it is. So the IYR, I did a whole thing about it here. And what I was saying is that the little doji candle of a peak E on Thursday with a gap down on Friday and not a good candle, testing the 14 period moving average in the daily, the weekly in a leg C still very bullish, bumping up against the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Yep, you can see it. I'm looking at the uh, Tiger TV. But the monthly broke out in a leg B, very positive. But the 10, the 120 minute chart showed a peak D and that there should be a, a follow through pullback. And that makes it very important. So here we are. Here's the candle today, down 21. Since 89.51, we're not we're only three hours into the open of the day, so I can't end the week. I can't even talk about it as if it's a done deal, but it is suggesting, based on the MACD turning down and the stochastic still strong at 84%, but turning down, and the, the blue uh, on balance volume pulling back, that maybe shorter term, that whole thing with the yields is just about to hit a, a little bit of a speed bump, just a little bit of a speed bump. <laughs> TNX, here it is, the TNX, the 10-year, nothing to see here, still very weak, but it needs a 20.23, 2.023. It needs to get to the 21, 2.1 level this week to say, no, I'm, 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 I'm tired of going down. I want a little bit of a breather. I'm coming up for air, that's all. Okay, and now let's go to crude oil. Crude oil is down 
Uh, 36 cents had a very nice pop from the low that was made around about the 51 area. It's trading at 57.07, down 36. Uh, the weekly chart says, yeah, it's in a trading band, nothing to see here. And the monthly chart says, whoops, there's that H pattern, the lowercase h. Let's see how, the, how a crude oil holds. And the IYT, I had a lot of questions about the IYT since I showed it in my newsletter over the weekend. Where is it? It's right here. Uh, it's right here. IYT, and what I discussed was that the IYT had made a leg D and a possible peak D in the daily, but a very tiny, quick A, B, C, D, way below the highs that were made just at the 200 level um, back in, in April. Uh, and um, it could actually start to pull back. And here is the IYT transports. Peak D pulls back today. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour, Dow's at 47. The s and only have one. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So i got a ton of questions. Just let me deal with this right now because it's part of the panoply of things I want to go through today. And then at the end of the show, I'll do some other things. And then tomorrow, we'll get back to the nitty gritties of looking at individual stocks. Uh, good day to you, sir. Good day. Uh, could you please give me your analysis on Bitcoin on the weekly chart? Thank you. Now, I, I have no choice right now. I'm going to the Grayscale Bitcoin trust. I'm not sure, Paul, if this is what you were looking at, but I, if you don't mind, I'm going to look at this. I'll have to do a little work to, if I have a chance, I'll go to the actual Bitcoin. But other than evening hours, uh, this is during the day that Bitcoin as a fund trades. 
And this is what I'm looking at. It's in leg, I don't think this is a leg E in the daily. I think this is a brand new leg C. It broke out above 1258. The height was made back in May, and it's very strong. It's had two big gaps. Actually, this could be three gaps to the upside, but the MACD and stochastic are really strong. I think it will go to a D. With that said, <clears throat> the way the weekly chart is just spiraled, I mean, it was just three months ago, this thing's trading in the four area. And now it's at 15.28. This is fabulous action, I must say. And I was waiting for that. I, I did see the pullback from the peak day at 12.58 down to 9.03. But I just, I, I was so busy with other things that I, I kind of skipped over this, although that was the perfect place where the risk reward was what I've been talking about since it's an overnight, a non-trading vehicle. So Bitcoin would trade and you wake up the next morning, it could be anywhere and you're stuck with this thing trading at uh, 15.29, and Bitcoin pulls back 1,500 bucks, or the other way around, and, and, and you're stuck in the wrong position. If you're in the right position, um, and you're holding long, what I'm going to say is, I suspect at 15.29, there's a lot of resistance that I can see in the 16s. A lot of resistance doesn't mean to say, oh man, it's going to 60 and then it's going to plunge. What I am saying is that, I think a chunk of the move up has been done. I think it is going to go higher, but I would not be surprised if it bumps into resistance and it takes a little bit of a time out. But with that said, the way it's acting with the monthly uh, starting to just cross over with a week to go, um, we'll see if it crosses positive in the MACD. But the weekly chart is really strong. I would prefer if the stochastic was at, at 88 to 92 rather than 84 percent and that's another reason why i think there's going to be some kind of a digestive phase so paul if you're long i would say have a little patience but as it from 1532 where it is right now if you are long and you've got that question because you're a little bit nervous because of the speed that it's rallied with just as I, 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 what I'm going to say to you, before I left on vacation, I, was, I had a call on Visa, and I said Visa, and he called because he's had a, he's had a good position and it's made a fantastic uh, uh, gains, and he wanted to know what to do. And I said the way I'm looking at this is, I, if you have to take it off because you're a little nervous, take off something now. But I'm looking at Visa going higher. It's the same sort of thing. <clears throat> the technicals in GBTC are so strong at this particular moment that I think it's just a matter of time. It'll just need it'll need a little bit of a pullback, but I think it's going to go higher. But in the six fifteen, in the fifty 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 five to sixteen thirty five, maybe sixteen fifty seven ish area. I think that's where it's going to bump into resistance. If you haven't got a position, you're looking what to do. Oh, if you bought it right now at 1535, I think you could make some money. But this is now short-term trading. It's something completely different. I don't even want to go into the 120-minute chart other than to say even that's a little bit toppy. Now, if you give me a moment, I'm going to go to GBTC uh, in my Chapman Wave Automated Resistance. It just spiraled through 1383, the resistance, and now you've got a ton in the 10 minute between 1536, 1585, and 1612, nothing in the 120 minute chart. So that kind of confirms for me that we're getting real close to some kind of a resistance level. So if you want to trade on a short term basis, yeah, if you want to get a little bit, just a little trading position at 80, at 1531 right now, I would put in a 40 cent stop. But as soon as it starts to climb, I would raise that so at least part of the position, I'd raise the stop. I like it, and, uh, and the answer is, I think it's going higher. My suspicion is in the in the low 16s, it's going to bump into quite a bit of resistance, and then we'll look at it again. And please uh, email me again and ask the same question in about three days' time, let's look at it. So the answer is yes, I think it's going higher. Um, how high? It's really difficult to say. It's had enough gaps to say it should be running out of steam. Watch for a doji candle in the next three sessions that gaps down. And that says, okay, just for the moment, we're having a bit of a breather. Hope that helps you. And good eye. Yep, that, I think you're, you're right in looking at this. Um, if it's been on your radar, um, keep it on your radar. And if you're on the position, just use money management right now. I would keep a core position.
and, and, and have a trading position on the next. If it goes to a leg D, raise that trading position. Um, stop. Okay. Now, the next question I had is, um, yeah, one of the things I'd said earlier is that uh, we were looking at the, the cannabis section as having have had a great move and then it, for a while now it's just been consolidating and it's really been consolidating one by one the stocks have been consolidating and that says to me that something else has taken its place and what i said is i think bitcoin might have now taken its opportunity this time to invert and start to the upside while while uh, the mj the uh, that's the cannabis etf demonstrates that that sector is taking a breather Okay, so now the next question I had is, um, yes, so the questions I had uh, that I want to get to in a moment, I just wanted to show you something. In the TLT, you see the way the, the, the price moved in the daily chart above the nine, the green nine, nine period exponential moving average. And for the very first time on Friday, it went, it went under it, the 9, and it actually almost touched the black line, 130, 137, the 14-period uh, moving average. So just keep that in mind. If there is a close below 131, 37, let's call it 131.05. Yeah, let's just say it goes under 131. In the next two sessions, that's going to be really important. What does the market do as, he, as, as bonds pull back? Will money go back into the stock market? And away from bonds, what, what's going to happen here? And there's a real big divergence now that we're looking at between the different sectors. So that's what we have to keep in mind as well. There's a good opportunity. I, I wanted to mention it. I did mention it, and then I took it out in my newsletter. I'll do it tomorrow. Talking about the rotation, I actually mentioned the rotation, but I didn't use the word rotation. And we'll see what happens with the IYR. Look at that, down just 16 cents, but it is pulling back a little bit. The IYT, which I think is really important because I want to see, and the question in the den was, would you short the IYT? My answer is, I, not for my subscribers, on a personal basis, I probably would say, you know what, I'd have a look at this and I might buy a put. It's a 184. If the IYT has an option, a put option at 185, that is say, so that'll be the whole of July, right? Uh, I mean, all, whole of June into early July. If it has a 185, I wouldn't even go for the one, yeah, for 185 put for July, I'd buy that. I'd rather be having, I'd rather pay a little premium for an in the money put than to actually short, because anything can happen with crude oil and all that. But yes, I would look at it and I, I, I'm anticipating 182 is going to be hit in the next week, and that's the way you could use it. I'll be right back. Basel Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour. Dow's up 47. S&P is now only up 0.67. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi right, folks, so we're back with the Dow's up 40, SB's up 0.19. What we're looking at is the XLF. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of impressed that it's held this well, but it really hasn't done what I would like. I'd like to see instead of 27.17 right now down four cents, I'd like to see the 27.68 level or a little higher, just breaking out of this chapter wave inside track repellent zone. Uh, you can see that in the monthly charts, the same sort of thing that, that long term downtrend aligned from the 30.33 January 2018 high. Uh, then again to the high that was made back in September, the lower high, and then the two series of lower highs in the last uh, two months. Uh, you need to get there. And I'm impressed that with the rate so low, it's still held quite well. But the financial S&P uh, spider fund needs to really push higher and it needs to do it fairly soon. So far, it's holding, I think, pretty pretty okay. Okay, a couple of things. Wheat, dust wheat, is trading really nicely, up 10 and a half at 5.36 and a half. Soybeans, uh, continuous contract, made a peak deed right at the 200 period moving average that makes the 200 period moving average of 9.13 a, a magnet line that says it can go up, it can go down, it's gonna hug that line for a little while longer after that peak D, MAGD stochastic, all very strong. It's up six and a half, I like it at 9.09. And con, con, talking about con with the Boston accent, uh, the, uh, uh, the wind that changed its name, got opened uh, over the weekend, huge success. And they've really gone out. They got a 20 million uh, Coons, Jeff Coons, uh, that was it Popeye, yeah, Popeye. I've got friends who went there and they were invited to go Friday night. Uh, someone who's very, very involved there uh, um, that invited them. And uh, I remember telling the person who's very involved, I met them uh, a couple of times. And it was like three years ago, I said, you know what? It's just going to be money. The city wants the, wants the profits. So you're going to have to just count out to everything they say. They're going to want a park. They're going to want this. They're going to want roads. They're going to want this. And right at the very end, they're going to say they'll hold you up uh, because that's the way it is. And you, uh, we've been around a long time seeing how the commission works. And that's exactly what happened with the last payment. I think it was like $32 billion just to even be able to open the door. And of course, they will make it up fairly quickly, I think. Um, but it did cost them the overran by about 60 or 80 percent of the budget. So it's going to be very interesting. Not, this is funny. It's just nothing that's ever appealed to me, nothing that I tend to do. Um, stock market is challenging enough. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what happens. So that's, I said, con, because con or the Boston accent has an H in it, just like Harvard has an H in it. Two H's actually. So corn is trading up three and a half at 4.45 and three quarters. It should make a leg D, and that's the reason why we're along the fund um, in the grains 
and 460, I'd say 465 is a nice breakout. And that tests once again the 200 period moving average in the weekly. It has to get it over 462 to start to either continue leg B or to start a new leg C next week. But that's the way it's going to be. It must not test the 416 area again. So far, that's good. Uh, did I do crude oil? I think I said crude oil was down a little bit. Nice bounce. Uh, treating it as a bounce, I happen to like that the transports and the and the um, um, crude oil and the Dow industrials go together, but they're not. Now a lot of divergences. I'm respecting those divergences. KBE question in the den. KBE is the regionals. KBE coming up is 42.23 down 17 cents. It is not as strong as the uh, XLF. I, th I suspect that the XLF will be the big breakout first, and then the KRE will follow, trading at 42.23 down 17 cents. Needs to get to the 43.80 area. Actually, it needs to get to 44, and then that's going to be a, a way better move at 44 because it's over the 200 period moving average, the daily moving average. Uh, what else did I want to do? Oh. Um, high-grade copper, high-grade copper. Yeah, it's just kind of stuck at the lower end. It's not telling me anything. Wood, I did for subscribers. I haven't been shown the wood uh, chart for a little while because I've been so busy with other things. But it's come off the bottom. It's not a great pattern. This is the iShares, timber and forestry ETF. They kind of go together, uh, uh, high-grade copper, and with these international um, economic barometers and so forth. They're saying, yeah, but a little bit of a balance, but the bigger picture is not that great. What am I missing here? Uh, I think I've got almost everything that I wanted. I had there was a question. Oh, look at this. P-A-L-L. -L. This is palladium. What a nice move. Leg E, 145.34, up 3.23, up 2.28 percent today. Had a low just recently of 120.01 on the 9th of May. Goes from 120 to 145 just a few weeks. Hey, well, more than a few weeks, but still, what a nice move. But it needs Aberdeen Physical Palladium trading at 145.34. It needs to get to test 149s. That was the high in March of 2019 for a cup formation. The MACD is trying to turn positive. I suspect that Palladium is going to that 153, did I say it was? 152.97 area um, over the next uh, couple of weeks. Very nice. Oh, call awaiting. Mark in Denver. How are you, Mark? Good, Basil. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Hey, we talked, I think, last week about the steel stocks, and I've still got a position in um, U.S. steel around 1370-ish, and a position in AK steel around 205. And uh, and I've got my stops in right at those entry prices that have gone up. But I was wondering what your thoughts are. Okay, so I, I, Mark, you're kind of a little bit fading in and out, but as I recall, you got in at 13.90 or 14 something, right? At 13.73, like three. That's it, right? 13.73, and it's at 14.44, and it had a really nice run all the way to 15.68. Uh, this this right. peak C decline is a little disappointing in the in the power that it's had to the downside, but it's still about the nine period moving average. I was looking at the steels uh, over the weekend. I, it might, it, I still think it might be a little early. We're going to have to wait for a little bit more news that says that there will be some positives in steel and specifically for USX, but I like the fact that it's gone. I mean, $11.67 at the low at the end of May Going to the uh, high 15s, I mean, that is a huge percentage move. So on a percentage basis, that's fantastic. On a percentage basis, going from the high of 47.64 in March of 2018 down to 11 is a little bit of a problem. So the monthly chart and weekly chart just need a lot of work. But I'm starting to see at least some positive signs. Now, I, just for a minute, I'm going to separate any news that could help to the pure technicals. So Mark, this is what I'm looking at. In this particular move, you're in the 30, 1370s. I would not want to see you take a loss on this position. I would much rather you say, I'm going to make a 10 cent profit no matter what happens. That'll be my stop on, on, on even the core position. And I'll tell you why. From this peak C, even though the MACD is good, stochastic has pulled back to 74% instead of being over 80. If it starts to trade under the 14 period moving average and it goes under $14.10, 
there's a real good chance it's going to have to test the low that was made back on the 17th of June, and that's down to the 13th, 32 area, at least get to the lower area. And if it broke that support of the 14 premium moving average, I think you're going to have more opportunity. You'll have another opportunity to get in. So I, can you hold on? Because there's something that's really important in the weekly that I just want to say would be a big positive if, if it happens this week. Yeah, I can hold on. Okay, good. Okay, Mark's holding on. Dow's up 48. S&P's up one. We'll be right back talking U.S. Steel X trading at 1444, down 24 cents. And it's interesting, and it's worth talking about. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. So, folks, stay tuned. You've got Steve Rhodes coming up, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, uh, programming all day. So let's go back to Mark and Denver. So, Mark, this is what I'm looking at. I, I just did X, and I've opened it up because this is what I showed subscribers, although we didn't actually buy it. I had this V-shaped pattern with a left side, right side price time match. It did it exactly. My target was in the uh, 1522 level and it had to get there by um by the 20th of june and it got there on the 19th of june it went above it so now it's accomplished everything i wanted i'm going to say to you if I, i'm it's a pity about this red candle today um if it was just a little bit green i'd say oh i that's that's really nice action considering the market's kind of shaky but i am going to say to you I'd say to you, make sure you make, make at least 10 cents on it. I would actually raise that stop. The 14-period moving average is at 14.20, just maybe 14.06, somewhere around there. I'd maybe say take a little bit off, and maybe 13.90 is the stop that I would use just for the moment. But if you can, let's talk again. 
Wednesday. Let's skip tomorrow and do Wednesday and see where it is. So far, I think it has enough strength that if it holds the 14s and it's able even just a flicker, even for one second, to get to 14.88, it just has to touch it once in the next two days. That'll be really good action. I looked at the SLX, the steel ETF. It also did exactly what I was talking about. It went to the left side. No, it didn't go to the 39.17 level. It went to peak C at 38.90, and it's pulling back a little bit. It's still looking quite good. I think it's going to be okay unless there's a real unless the market sells off and it includes U.S. steel. But at this point, think, U.S. steel AK's seems to be holding quite nicely. Yeah. Do you have a so, chance to look at AK steel real quick? Yep. I'm sorry. What? A minute. Do you have a chance to look at AK steel? Really yeah, AK Steel, I just looked at AK Steel during the break. It's doing exactly the same thing. It, it didn't get to 242, which was my target about four days ago, but it is holding at 220. I like it. I think it's holding very nicely, but it's in an area. Yeah, Steel, we can get anything at any point. I do like it. If you are in it, I'd say just watch the 210 area, 209. I take a little bit off here if it is 209, but so far it's holding pretty well and the weekly is improving. Hope that helps you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very much Thank for calling. Uh, folks, have a great day. I'll be back. Check out my opening call. We've had some real nice trades. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a good day.